Last week, someone posted a meme which came up on my Facebook feed. And it said this. People ask you what you do for a living so they can calculate the level of respect to give you. I find that quite a challenging thought. I mean, in Britain, it's something we do all the time. Meet someone for the first time, almost immediately we're asking them what they, about their work. I actively try to avoid getting into such conversations too quickly. Not because I'm any better than anyone else, but there's just very little that can jog someone's memory about somewhere they really have to be or someone they really have to speak to more effectively than the discovery that the person they've just met is a Baptist minister. So maybe I do feel a certain bit of judgment being made against me. But it did challenge me. It made me think, do I do that? I suppose I hope I don't. And yet, I can't think of times when I've met someone who has a really impressive sounding job title. And I'm kind of wowed by it. And maybe I do want to be associated with them or do treat them a bit differently or see them a bit differently because of it. And I suspect most of us, if we're really honest, can think of times when we've done the same thing. The passage in which today's reading is based is quite a challenging one. I mean, most of us, certainly if we claim to be followers of Jesus, would probably like to think that we would be welcoming and hospitable to Jesus if he came into our midst. But in this passage, Jesus warns us that often we could turn him away. And we don't even know it. Something that's true of both those who do and those who fail to do the right thing is that at the time, they don't have a clue who they're dealing with. Those who have responded by offering food, drink, clothing, shelter, hospitality are just as oblivious as those who don't offer those things to the fact that they're encountering Jesus. Because he doesn't come the way we expect. We make our judgment on partial information. And we fail to recognise the Christ who came amongst us. Yesterday I spoke about two comings of Christ. I spoke about how Advent reminded us of his first coming, of Christmas, when, when Jesus enters our world as a baby born to a young couple in Bethlehem. But I also spoke about Advent reminding us that we too are waiting for Christ to finish what he started, to, for him to make all things new. In Christian theology, this is sometimes referred to as the second coming. But in Celtic tradition, they talk of three comings of Christ. Yes, they too remember the first one when Jesus is born and they look forward to all things being made new. But between those two, they speak of the Christ who comes to us each day. The Christ whom we encounter in our comings and goings throughout each day. The Christ we meet in the opportunities we have and the decisions we make about how we will respond to those who cross our paths. Will we respond with love, welcome, generosity, hospitality? Or will we walk away? The first coming of Christ largely went unnoticed. This was a people who waited a thousand years or more for a Messiah to come. And when he came amongst them, they didn't spot him. You see, despite the icons and the Christmas cards, 
There unfortunately weren't any circles of light or halos around Mary and the Christ child. There was nothing really to distinguish Mary and Joseph from any other couple who might have rocked up in Bethlehem at that time expecting a baby. Oh, I'm sure had it been known or believed that the child this young woman was carrying was the Son of God, perhaps they would have responded differently. But they didn't. Because it was just so ordinary. Why would anyone know this? And so it is with the Christ who comes to us each day. He doesn't announce his arrival with fanfare. It doesn't become obvious straight away with choirs of angels following behind him that this is Jesus. He shows up in the skies. Perhaps in that one that we find challenging or who always has the habit of showing up when it's least convenient. He doesn't come amongst those with power, pr pride, prestige, amongst those whom we're all too happy to be associated with. But he tells us we'll find him amongst the least of these. A month now, we'll, from now, we'll be preparing to make room in our hearts for the Christ who came among us. But we don't have to wait until then. Nor do, we have to, nor do we have to wait till any great cosmic consummation, however that plays out. We can't control either of those things. But we can make room for him today as we encounter him in the least of those whom we meet. Grace and peace to you.